Hey, what's going on? It's Jerry Glean back on the scene here with another video. Today, I'm going to be showing y'all how to compress your vocals. So let's hop right in and get to it. So the reason that you want to compress your vocals is so that they are more consistent in volume. When you record vocals, there's going to be parts in that recording that are much louder than others. Maybe you sang a little louder in certain areas, or maybe you even just moved closer or further away from the mic throughout your recording. These issues will cause you to have peaks within your audio file. So take, for instance, this vocal recording that I have here in green. You can see that there's sudden spikes in volume throughout the vocal. So compression will help us fix this. A compressor is going to turn down and smooth out the louder parts of our audio signal so that there's less of a volume difference between the loudest and quietest parts of our vocal. So it doesn't matter which exact compressor that you use because they're all going to have the same settings that you can adjust. and. I'll show you exactly what those settings are and explain how each of them work. So I have the Renaissance compressor pulled up here and the first setting that you're going to need to learn how to set is the threshold. And the threshold is simply going to tell the compressor at what loudness level do you want me to start turning down the audio signal. So let me go ahead and play the vocal and I'll slowly start lowering this threshold setting until I start to see some compression on the vocal. Now, most compressors are gonna have some type of meter that shows you um, how much gain reduction or compression you're getting. So pay attention right here in the middle of the meter. Um, you'll notice that once I lower the threshold below the loudest parts of the vocal, that I will start to get some compression here on this meter. Staring down the hourglass as this day passes by. This world is moving fast, so baby, let's take our time. Okay, so once the compressor saw that signal was going past the threshold, it started to turn that signal down and you could see that represented here by the gain reduction meter. Okay, so the next setting that you need to know is the ratio and the ratio is just gonna tell the compressor how much to turn the signal down that goes above the threshold. So for example, if I have the ratio set at two to one like I have here, this means that for every two decibels that go above the threshold, it's gonna get turned down and only one decibel is gonna be allowed to pass through. If the ratio is set at 10 to one, this means that for every 10 decibels that go above the threshold, only one decibel is gonna be allowed to pass through. So in simple terms, the higher that you have your ratio set, the more compression you're gonna get. A good ratio setting to start with for vocals is gonna be anywhere between two and six. And for me personally, I usually set mine right at four. Okay, so now that we have a good ratio set and we understand how the threshold setting works, let's go ahead and play the vocal again and we'll lower our threshold until we start to see about 10 to 12 decibels of gain reduction right here on the gain reduction meter. Staring down the hourglass as this day passes by, this world is moving fast, so baby let's take our time. Now how much compression or gain reduction you want on your vocal is completely up to you. Um, but I will say that I typically aim for around 10 decibels of gain reduction. Sometimes I do more and sometimes I do less. And you can always come back to the compressor and adjust the settings when you're mixing. So don't be afraid to experiment. Okay, so now that we've effectively turned down the louder parts of our vocal, we need to bring the overall volume level of our vocal back up to around the same volume level that it was at before compression. The only difference now is that we're turning up a more consistent and compressed vocal where the louder parts won't stick out as much. And you can do this with the gain knob over here on the right side of the compressor. Most compressors have this setting labeled as makeup gain, um, but some compressors also have it labeled as output, but they're the same setting. And I like to add volume back to the vocal while the beat is playing so I know exactly where it sounds good within the entire mix. Passes by this world is moving fast. So baby, let's take our time. Okay, so right there at about 11 decibels of gain added back to the vocal, it sounded pretty good to me. Um, and we can always come back and adjust that later on in the mix. Okay, the last two settings that you need to adjust are gonna be the attack and release settings. So the attack setting will tell the compressor how fast to turn down the signal once it goes above the threshold. And the release setting is gonna tell the compressor 
how fast to let go of the signal once the signal is back below the threshold. So these two settings in tandem control the overall timing and energy of the compression. So let me play the vocal and I'm gonna show you how a fast and a slow attack time sounds. I'm gonna set the attack setting to the fastest attack setting possible and then I'm also gonna set it to the slowest so that way you can kind of hear how the attack time affects the compression. Staring down the hourglass as this day passes by This whole world is moving fast So baby let's take our time so as y'all heard with the slow attack time right there, the vocal was so much more aggressive and in your face because the transients were coming through the compressor. But with the really fast attack time, the transients were squashed down so that the more louder parts weren't as upfront and noticeable. Now it really depends on what you want, but for me, I like to have just a little bit of transient come through the compressor to maintain some of the original dynamics of the vocal but it's all dependent on the vocal recording and how loud your peaks are. So let's play the vocal again, and I'm gonna try to find a good attack setting for this vocal. Staring down the hourglass as this day passes by This whole world is moving fast So baby, let's take our time The rain is falling as so right there at about five milliseconds of attack time, it sounded the most natural to my ear. There were still some transients coming through the compressor, but overall it sounded very consistent um, and natural to my ears. Anywhere between a fast attack time and a medium attack time have always given me good results. All right, so next I'm gonna play the vocal again and I'm gonna show y'all what a very fast release setting sounds like and then I'm gonna set the release setting to the slowest setting possible so you can hear what a slow release setting sounds like. Staring down the hourglass as this day passes by This whole world is moving fast So baby let's take our time to break so with the faster release time, the compressor just felt kind of jumpy, right? It was just letting the compression go really fast. But with the slower release time, you could really hear the compression because it was holding on to that signal and it wasn't letting go. So you were getting that pumping effect. And for me, I like to set mine somewhere in the middle for a smooth compression effect to where you don't really hear the compression too much. So let's play the vocal again and find a good sweet spot for the release. Staring down the hourglass as this day passes by This whole world is moving fast So baby, let's take our time The rain is falling as the clouds make their way through All right, so the vocal's sounding pretty good to me at this point And by now you should have a good understanding of all of the basic settings that you're going to find on pretty much any compressor Some compressor plugins might have additional settings that you can adjust So I just encourage y'all to go read the manual for whichever plugin you choose to use um, I've always found those to be super helpful. All right, so that's it for today. I hope y'all learned something. If you have any questions, just leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can and I'll see you on the next video.